The earth is severely lacking in resources and food. Each and every nation chooses to finance the deaths of vulnerable members of their own families in order to reduce the global population. In this case, the York family experiences a horrendous chain of events. The plot revolves around their responses to the disaster. People are now struggling to find food and water around the world, in sharp contrast to the plenty they once had. Bob, the docks officer, removes a body from a residence and awards a girl for volunteering to help the family. They remove the body, and the deceased son threw coffee cups at posters fastened to the city walls, imploring people to force their older housemates to make sacrifices in order to enhance their family's quality of life. When two men walk into Mr. Charles York's opulent home, a well-known retired television journalist, the scene changes. Those men maintain the hefty piano in Charles's bedroom and settle household disputes. They watch while Jared, Charles's son, speaks on a TV program in the interim. He feels that youngsters should have the right to join and supports encouraging them to volunteer for environmental protection before the age of 18. He uses his 10-year-old son's declaration of his desire to enlist and his lack of objections as evidence to support his position. The employee overheard the talk, lost all self-control and cursed Jared for airing disagreeable views on TV. Charles concurs that Jared's statements are absurd. While his wife Dawn, a skilled Japanese chef prepares meals in the kitchen with her finest cutlery, Charles cleans his room. Charles is having the entire family around for dinner at his house. He pours the beverage in the kitchen sink and sees that Don is agitated because he wants to make sure he finishes all the alcoholic drinks from home before they arrive. Don hugs him and starts crying. Jared hears his ex-wife's call when he pulls his car up to his house. She is furious with him and demands an explanation for saying on national television that he would be willing to enlist his child for euthanasia. Unexpectedly, as Jared walks inside, he notices the delicious food being prepared. These kinds of moments are becoming rare. As Charles puts on his finest suit and prepares to greet his children at home, contrary to Charles's desire, Rachel answers the door at the same moment and finds herself not alone. She couldn't leave her alone, so she brought her daughter Mia along. Even though she has a quick fuse, if Charles is not comfortable with Mia being there, she wants to leave the house right away. Charles, nevertheless, demanded that she stay. Mia is ecstatic to see Jared's new automobile when Charles first meets her. Noah, Charles's adopted son, resists the want to flee and instead stays outside the house for the dinner. He needs further time to confront his family because he has been an addict for a long time. But Grace, his girlfriend, tells him to close his eyes and see himself in a serene setting. In Noah's world, living in an apartment with Grace is the ideal scenario. Immediately he feels at ease and a car pulls up next to him. Ashley, his younger sister, is an inexperienced actress. She discloses that in addition to working very hard to get employment, she hasn't even signed up for a video game commercial. Upon seeing Grace's name on Noah's phone, she becomes curious about her identity. Ashley is revealed to be Noah's girlfriend and her 10 years of clean living. Noah says he never keeps secrets from Ashley. Since he's not yet ready to tell dad the news, he wants her to keep this a secret from him. Ashley accepts, and the two of them head inside to find everyone gathered in the kitchen. Charles is pleased to see that Noah is in good health. Dawn placed the beautiful dishes in front of them shortly after that. She is their stepmother, who battled to become a world-class cook before having to close her eatery. Charles makes a toast for the family prior to dessert. Rachel wants to know why their dad phoned them immediately, because she could not wait to find out more. Charles tells Dawn that they have both decided to enlist while holding her hand in his. Since none of them are impoverished or on the manual list anytime soon, the news was somewhat shocking to them all. Charles's choice is therefore illogical. After Rachel sends Mia out of the dining room to carry on the talk, Charles says that he and his wife chose to enlist in order to save the rest of their family because they were expecting someone from their family to be on the list shortly. Furthermore, more families would be inspired to give their life in sacrifice since Charles and his spouse are well-known individuals. Even though Dawn enrolls, Ashley can tell that she is not quite satisfied with her choice. Dawn stands up, requests that the talk be stopped, and heads to deliver the dessert because they have already enlisted and to prevent more drama. Since Jared works for the government, he is aware that privileged families like them are not wanted. Rather, the government presented immigrants with the option to give their lives in return for the citizenship of their offspring. To speed the attainment of the national aim, they release the inmates first. Jared deems heavily populated nations like Japan and India responsible for the situation. 
Charles tells Jared to shut up because the fire of Don's restaurant is already traumatizing Dawin as a result of his actions. Ashley informs Noah's father that Grace had been clean for a very long time, but Noah gives his father Grace's picture instead. Noah had moved in with an addict. Mia was unable to continue scrolling on the smartphone screen because the internet was down. Even though Charles, who thinks highly of her and hopes Noah and her a very wonderful life together did. Charles discovers abruptly that Dawn departed the house, stating that she was unable to complete the task. Mia discovers a docs official when she opens the door simultaneously. Bob, the docs representative, is a talkative guy who won't listen to Ashley's request for him to come back at a later time when everyone realizes that Charles is going to die right then and there. However, Bob enters the house and announces that the procedure will begin at the appointed hour. Unexpectedly, he learns that Charles is not prepared to pass away because he nailed himself to his adored wife, who has recently departed. He wishes to delay the process for a while as a result. Bob accepts and requests that before they depart, he sign a few documents. Charles reads the contents of the sheet as he enters his reading room, and his rage grows. Charles withholds information. After hiding the paper's contents, Charles sits down on the bed and gets ready to commit suicide. In a stressful moment, Noah plays the piano as Bob shoots himself repeatedly with syringes, and Charles passes away. Before leaving the house, he explains that he now requires a new body and places the old one in a bag. Noah believes that this is a joke and wants to leave the house right away. Bob, however, ruthlessly informs the other docs official that the York family signed for two bodies and he will pick up the other two in the coming hours. They therefore have two hours to choose the recipient. Bob has severed all ties in order to prevent Jared from speaking with the government officials because he is determined to take one more life at whatever cost. Bob gets punched by Rachel for not giving them a chance. He takes her outside in his van with him because he knows it can't be Mia because she is a child. When they decide on a person's name to be killed, they have to blink the light. Bob delivers all of them the information he has gathered by surreptitiously accessing their personal accounts and life events before he leaves the house. When Ashley reads it, she becomes enraged because her director believes Ashley is a melodramatic who is unfit for the theater. Before Rachel and Jared met Ashley and Noah, they were by themselves for a while. Ashley is urged to join Jared in getting rid of Noah, since Jared believes that, because of his addiction, he is the most useless person. In contrast, Bob is playing cards with Mia and notices that the light is flashing when he receives the news. He enters the house right away to inquire about the choice, but they want to know how he predicts who will pass away. Bob lets them make the final choice and heads back to his truck, only to discover that Mia has torn every single card. Rachel gets right to the point. She has no attachment to anyone because they don't see each other very often. She is unconcerned if any of them pass away. She abruptly stabs Noah, then begins to persuade Ashley to join her and Jared in their murderous scheme because Noah is a worthless man who murdered someone many years ago. Ashley threatens Rachel, pointing out that Noah is now free of all charges because their father gave the deceased man's family three million dollars before he passed away while she is the one who is having difficulty securing employment. He's not inheriting yet, but before Noah can stop them, all three of them grab a stick or other weapon. Rachel hurls a flying knife in Noah's direction as he throws Jared away and withdraws into a room. Bob continues to disparage Mia's mother while he waits for their verdict, saying that she was conceived via IVF and that her mother is resentful. Bob learns that Docs has contacted Daw as Mia sobs in the restroom. Bob wants Docs to keep Dawn in the station because he wants to witness the Yorks kill each other. In contrast, Noah sits in the room, cries, and applies bandages to his wounds. Though he misses Grace terribly, he is unable to communicate with her. He tosses the phone out the window and writes her a note, wishing he could see her before he passes away. Grace receives the message on her mobile device when it picks up signals from outside the house. Now he exits the room and stealthily makes his way downstairs while holding a fork and a stick. All of a sudden, the lights go out, and he walks into his father's reading room to look for other people. Surprisingly, Ashley is hiding behind the door and pleads with him to save her from Rachel and Jared, who are roaming the house and trying to kill her with Dawn's knives. In the hallway, Noah cries when he watches his childhood picture with Ashley holding her in his lap. He puts his hand on the picture, and she attacks him with a small pointed object. It attaches his hand to the picture, and Ashley runs away. Noah barely detaches his hand and gets into a defensive position. He attacks Jared, then pierces Rachel's neck with a fork. The lights turn back on, and Jared follows him with Dawn's knives. 
Noah throws his knives away, but Ashley once again strikes his head with a heavy stick. Noah falls unconscious. Conversely, Bob defiles Mia's intellect with his scum, contending that it is reasonable and equitable to murder more people in this circumstance. As the remaining three siblings firmly bind Noah with ropes, Ashley expresses regret, claiming that she betrayed her brother because Jared and Rachel used their influence over her. They hear an odd noise outside, just as they are all going to knife Noah's body to death. The person who wishes to meet Noah is Grace. Despite her fear of ducks, she records everything on her phone to keep things organized and prevent chaos. They put Mia back in the van as she bolts out of it, heading toward Rachel. Grace flees to seek assistance after realizing how determined these people are to kill Noah. Bob gives him the command to shoot her right away. She passes away instantly. Jared, Rachel, and Ashley return to the house, but Noah is nowhere to be found. He regains consciousness as soon as he hears Grace's voice outside, which is when he hears them shoot her down. They realize that Noah is going to attack them when the lights abruptly go out. They all reached into the kitchen drawer for the first tool they could find. However, after tricking him, Noah tracks Ashley down and stabs her with a large knife. Then he stabs Rachel in the face with a tiny knife in an attack. Subsequently, he attempts to choke her, but Rachel begs him to cease, as it was she who tricked her into killing him. However, because he is the older one, Jared now wants Noah to murder him. Now that they are all prepared to give their lives in order to save one another, Noah wants to see one of them perish, because Bob doesn't deserve to live. Time is running out, so Bob waits in the van. Jared covers Ashley's wound with a hot iron, which stops the bleeding, but causes Ashley great pain. Now when it's time, Bob goes inside and discovers Ashley dead on the ground while the others reach the front door. Abruptly, Ashley stands up and tackles Bob, giving Noah the confidence to apprehend Bob, and Rachel stabs the other police officer. The remaining police officers join them at the same moment, but they take their weapons. Everything was going according to plan, until Ashley passed out again. Bob hits and throws Noah after noticing they are not paying attention. However, Jared knocks Bob out with a stick blow. When consciousness returns, he discovers that he is entangled in the ropes. They now learn that Dawn was discovered by the department just hours before, despite Bob's eagerness to spill blood at York's residence. Although Rachel uncovers Ashley's body to show that it was his co-worker who killed Grace, Bob is happy to see Ashley's body hidden on the floor. Bob tries to scare them by saying they will spend the rest of their lives behind bars for his murder. However, that gives them even more courage, and Noah gets ready to inject Bob with a syringe. However, they intended to disclose that prior to his passing, their father had fought and killed Doc's employees. Using this approach, Bob perishes when Noah forces the fluid into his body. Subsequently, Dawn and the children watch Noah perform on the piano in a family concert. This is where the film finishes.